It's about four uh, o'clock in the afternoon on <clears throat> Sunday, April 28th, 2024. And we just got almost three inches of rain this morning and this afternoon. Um, so it's not raining right now, obviously. But uh, we were looking at the sheep and my wife made the comment. She's like, are you missing some sheep? And I'll be honest, I don't know. I've been trying to document what sheep I can see out here and count them and stuff. And um, I think all the, the lambs are accounted for, the young lambs. But um, there's other th other sheep that I'm, I don't think I've seen. Now, I went through yesterday and tried to, you know, look at all the sheep, take pictures of them and, and then uh, write down if I saw them on my list of sheep and there was you know five or six that I didn't see but that's because they keep moving I think but um, and then there's a couple today that I saw that I didn't see yesterday so either they're disappearing and reappearing out of existence or I'm just not able to track the sheep that way but uh, yeah <laughs> I don't know, how do I keep track of sheep? The, the, the tags that I got from the Shearwell company, I'm sure they're fine if you're handling the sheep, but if you're looking at them from a distance, you can't tell which sheep is which. So, um, I'm kind of disappointed with the tags that I got, but I think I'm gonna keep using them and uh, just you know put the sheep through the pen once a week or every other week or something like that and carefully document what's going on. Yes, it's a big stress on the sheep to move all the way down and all the way back. My field's half a half a mile long. But uh, I was thinking of eventually, you know, investing in a pen system that I could deploy in the field. Um, if it's something where set up and tear down is really quick and easy. By really quick, I mean it takes less than an hour to take it down and set it up somewhere else then that's probably something I want to do. A lot of options out there. There's probably some things I can throw together with stuff I can buy locally. You know, because shipping for stuff like that is probably ridiculously expensive. But, um, yeah. It looks like the sheep are doing pretty well. I'm, I'm looking for signs of lameness. That's kind of my goal right now, is just to identify lameness. And... Uh, some other signs of any issues and problems but I'll be honest the lameness it seems to be gone um, there was one sheep I was looking at one of the St. Croix and she walks perfectly fine then I looked at her hoof I'm like oh man I need to trim that hoof back it doesn't look good the wall has grown so much that it's kind of flipped over which probably isn't the best idea um, some of the sheep were hanging out back here in the woods, separate from the others, but I'm pretty sure I saw that one with the rest of the sheep. So, I'm just going to go take a look and see what I can see in the woods here. Right now it's about uh, 73 degrees. It's really nice. A little bit humid, as expected to be after a rain when it's warm outside. Now where I come from, this is good summer weather. You know, you can go outside without wearing a coat. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, obviously, um, where they don't get warm summers. Um, their summer is basically spring temperatures. Yeah, they don't really hang out here, I think. I'm looking for any signs of sheep. I, this is where we moved them back, because we moved them back along the eastern part of my field. Ooh, it's really wet back here. Oh, yeah, it's very wet. A whole bunch of water got in my boot because it's not... It's got a bunch of cracks in it. They probably don't want to be back here, honestly. They like to stay dry. They like to keep their feet dry, I should say. They don't care about the rain. It doesn't affect them. There's a bunch of sheep manure. And you can kind of see... Um, looks like this is an area where they bed down. They lay down for a while because the grass is flat over here too. You know, 
But the thing that I'm worried about is that they somehow left the property or maybe they went under the wire and they're in some other part of my property. I just can't see them because the grass, you know. So I'm kind of, you know, taking my time to explore the rest of my pasture, you know. Because I don't know for a fact, ooh, look at that. That's a strawberry, not a raspberry. The dog just stepped right on it. <laughs> Yum. It's strawberry season already. Raspberry, raspberry, sorry. It's red like a strawberry. There's another one. So, yeah, three inches of rain. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, look at that, the flowers have already come off. So, I don't know what plant that is. So many plants to explore. But, uh, yeah, I was thinking, uh, um, I'll talk about this more in the cow update I do later. Oh, uh, this is what I wanted to talk about. It's already six minutes in the video. I'm going to talk about this stuff. The important stuff that I wanted to talk about. So I went to see the guy um, down in Lampasas, Texas, which is near... Oh, gosh. It's, it's near Waco. Um, there's another town that's nearby. I, I know somebody from that area... And he identified the proper pronunciation of the town names. And uh, so anyway, um, some of my questions um, were like what to do about lameness and the parasites, right? Those are the two big questions that I had. I wanted to know what he did for those two things. And he said, first of all, lameness isn't really an issue. So I, that's good news. Um... And he said if he did get a sheep that was lame, when they pin up the sheep, which they do regularly, uh, like every rotation, they go back to the pen, and he goes through all the sheep and looks at them closely. But uh, you at least have to do the eye test to see what color their eyelids are on the inside. Anyway, so lameness isn't really an issue for him. And he says he thinks that it's because of the rotation, rotating the, the sheep. They're never more than three days in one spot. And, uh, uh, you know, they don't go back to a spot for several weeks, right? So, if they were susceptible to lameness, which they probably aren't, he runs a St. Croix, Katata, and Dorper mix. Um, if they were subject to lameness, then he would just cull those sheep out of the herd, just get rid of them. Uh, but he doesn't have that issue, so he doesn't care too much about that. What he does for parasite control, he told me, he says that um, uh, parasites aren't really a big issue. Except for some of the sheep. They don't do well with the eye color, right? And so what he does is, when it gets bad enough that it warrants treatment, he'll spot treat. He'll only treat one of them with the uh, anti-parasitics. And then he separates them out and he culls them. He gets rid of them. Um, I think he said only about 2% of the sheep have a problem with parasites. So he says in a year... So he has like 300 sheep, right? So in a year he probably um, culls six of them because of parasites, right? And uh, he emphasized genetics. He says you just got to cull. You got to cull aggressively. If the sheep don't do well, they're not going to get better with medicine. You know, he also said the sheep that show up in the market that are huge, he says, those are doctored. Those are not natural. And you're not going to make sheep like that. So don't, don't worry about it. Your sheep are going to be smaller, but uh, you won't be using tons of medicine and a strict regimen of this one, then this, then that one, then the other one. Right. Uh, then I asked him, uh, like, what's the biggest, like day to day, what's the biggest issue? What's the thing that he has to spend the most work on with the sheep? You know, with livestock, the nice thing is they feed themselves. Um, they move themselves. When you open up a new pasture, they do all the work. I just set up the wire, right? But uh, he said uh, that the biggest issue, the thing that causes them the most work and the most, you know, headache is uh, sheep that are skittish 
right? So some of the sheep sometimes are just scared for some reason of the humans, right? And uh, then there's sheep that cross the wire, right? It just seems like some sheep are just genetically predisposed to crossing the wire and being a general nuisance in that way. And uh, what does he do about it? Again, he calls. Uh, he calls aggressively. So um, he keeps his eye open for any sheep that kind of like, when he shows up in the pasture, they run around, um, staying away from him. You know, that's not good. Now, if you watch the behavior of this sheep here, I think this was the sheep that was laying with no tail. Yeah, this is no tail. So she was the one that could barely walk on her back left leg there. I was concerned her lambs weren't getting enough food, but you can see they're doing pretty good. Right, I'm gonna make her walk there. So, yeah, you know, she's not running a marathon, but she's not limping either, you know. So anyway, um, so if they're skittish, he has to call them, right? If they cross the wire, he has to call them. He says the thing about the wire crossing behavior is the sheep are always testing the wire. You know, for some reason they like to get a, a shock, I guess. Um, but uh, you have to keep your wire hot. You have to make sure the fence is maintained. Speaking of which, I came out here and measured the wire. It was at 1,000 volts. And the bottom wire didn't have anything. So I need to go around and figure out where the leak is. Um, but uh, if they cross the wire, they have to be cold. They have to be separated from the flock because they're going to teach other sheep to do it. And then it can become a bad problem. And instead of one sheep, you have to call. Now it's 10 or 20. And it could just be a real issue. So um, those are things that I should watch out for. Is just bad behavior um, on the part of the sheep. Um, so, like, they're supposed to walk away from me. They're not supposed to, you know, bolt up and run away like they're scared. Uh, that said, my ewe number one, the oldest ewe that I have that's a St. Croix, um, she exhibits both of those behaviors. So I was kind of like, oh. Now, um, sheep being mammals, just like any other mammal, they can learn behavior and they can also untrain bad habits. So what I did with her is I just basically avoid her. I don't really, I don't really push the matter with her. You know what I mean? Let me show you what I mean. So you gotta watch the dog here. Um, I should have him on a leash just in case, but there's no new lamb, so it's probably okay. But um, I do have to train the dogs not to smell the sheep. Do not smell the newborn lambs. Um, just stay away, you know. <laughs> you see that little lamb jumping up and down? Happy, happy. Hey, Snowball. So I keep this on there so I can grab them. If I need to, I need them to train to let me grab them and put a leash on them from time to time. Anyway, um, so let me show you the skittish sheep that I have here. Uh, it's number one. And she's always been skittish. Um, the other ewe, when I bought her, I bought them at the same time. The other ewe was like a yearling. And she, uh, she fairly quickly warmed up to me and I was able to hand feed her. Um, almost from the very beginning and I couldn't figure out why the other one refused to get near me Even when there's food involved. I'd turn my back and she'd run up and eat food and I'd look at her and she'd run away Okay, so the one on the right there. That's the one that's super skittish The one on the left is her um, uh, She just gave birth. She's like a year and a half old, right? So let's watch what happens when I get close to him Right, so she's walking away Walking away and then she's going to pick up the pace. There you go. You see? So she's like, don't even get close to me. Within 50 feet is too much. Okay. And you can kind of see that that behavior is trained. Right? So there's Rammy. Rammy's her, her ram. Her baby that was born this year. Um, that's Rammy's sister there. That one is that one's lamb that was born this year as well. So that is her granddaughter. So... And these are some ram lambs I'm going to sell soon. I want to get a weight on them. I think I bought weighing equipment because I want to weigh these guys. 
Um, oh, the ideal weight is about 70 to 90 pounds. It's kind of the sweet spot. And uh, I asked him if he targets the religious holidays. He said, absolutely. So I will be targeting religious holidays, timing births so that like some of the lambs will be ready to harvest when the religious holidays come around. Uh, probably won't be able to do that next year, but uh, definitely eventually. Look at that lamb climbing on that mother. So those are the things that he struggles, uh, the, the things he spends the most time doing is just you know, finding the wayward sheep and dealing with the ones that are skittish. And uh, he showed me his pen set. <laughs> You're trying to climb mama? Is that what you're doing? You're climbing mama? Uh, the ones that are, um, you pen design. You call it a bud, a bud box. I wish I had some chalk so I can kind of explain to you how bud box works. I'll just show you with my fingers. Okay, so imagine you have like a pen right here. Now the dog's inside the pen. Get out of the pen dog. Okay, you have a pen, right? So the idea is the, the animals, they come in and they rotate around the pen and then they go out. So you have two doors, one door here, one door here, and the square is like this, right? The idea is that as the, the animals come in, their instinct is to go back out, right? So they go in, they realize they're trapped, and so they circle around, and you're standing far away from them. You're just kind of being a pressure on them. And so you kind of walk them around, and then when they go and they see that gate is closed, they see the other gate is open, and they use that as the exit. What is this? Let me zoom in for you. <laughs> anyway so that's the bud box idea and so a pen design like that um, is fairly low stress for the animals um, you don't have to get close to them you don't have to prod them they're gonna move naturally and he says it's very quick and easy and then he used like some kind of cattle panel for his pen and he says the problem is the lambs get through the little lambs they'll get through uh, of course, the mamas can't get through, but the lambs can. And that's typically the ones you want to target is the lambs. You're trying to sort the lambs. And there's another device. It's called a three-way sorting gate. So the animal goes in and can go out one of three directions, right? One animal at a time. And he said, that is critical. It's just impossible to run sheep unless you can three-way sort. Um, because the three-way sorting, you need to sort... Uh, he sorts the ewes from the ram lambs and the ewe lambs. He keeps them all separate from each other when it's time to, when it's time to uh, separate them out, right? So um, I think I'll get one of those. There's a company locally that makes that, so I'll probably buy their three-way sorting gate from them um, and maybe see what they have in terms of like a mobile um, sorting pin or something like that. Because it really is, you know, if I could set up the pin, I could use wires probably to separate the sheep um, and I had some ideas on how to run more than two strands if I need to. Um, but it, it's, it's probably very possible to quickly and easily sort the sheep, uh, and then use electric wire rather than physical fence. Um, but, you know, maybe I get enough to build like three pins. So one pin to put them in a shoot kind of design where I can work on them. And then a three-way sorting gate where it goes on to one pen, the other pen, or back to pasture, you know. So, and I, if I can bring that out to the field and do it, or like, you know, break it down into panels, bring it out to the field and set it up again within an hour, um, then I'd probably be doing that every week, maybe twice a week, you know, maybe every rotation. Um, probably at least once a week, you know, looking at the sheep closely, which is about what you need to do. You know, but as it is right now, um, I have to drive them half a mile back to the pen. And uh, I felt sorry for those little lambs. I really did. You know, um, I guess when they're older, it's not going to be big of a deal, that big of a deal. But, you know, anyway, um, last little bit of news is, uh, oh, I'll probably talk about it when we do the cattle update. Yeah, I'll talk about it when we do the cattle update. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. So you have something to look forward to. Maybe some kind of, you know, um, I'm not going to say it's going to be world shattering. It's going to be an interesting idea. And it has to do with fly control. And it has to do with setting up an extra wire. So 
we'll talk about that next week. Monday. Well, I guess it is next week already. So tomorrow. I'll make a video on that. Anyway, guys, um, uh, as always, your comments are super welcome. Um, I learn a lot from reading the comments. Uh, even people that I don't agree with or they have ideas that I'm kind of like, well, I don't know if that's quite right, you know. Um, I do appreciate the comments. Um, I'm learning a ton, and I'm going to keep learning. And hopefully some of this is useful to give you some ideas on what you can do with your operation. And, um, you know, I, I have to say that I thought sheep would be a lot worse. It would be a lot harder to run. I thought it would be a lot more taxing, but... No, I'm actually enjoying this, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting lots more sheep. Looking forward to growing the herd. And um, based on the grazing density he was using, if I keep a six-week rotation with the sheep, I can probably easily stock like 600 sheep, I think, with grass growing like this. Now, probably not the whole year long. But, uh, you know, 600 sheep is a lot of sheep. Um, but I think it's possible with good grass to keep that many sheep and make some money. Guys, have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.